Hello once again, it's Pastor John Carlo from Christian Pentecostal Church in Staten Island. And we've been studying the, the doctrine of salvation. And we see it's not as simple as we would like to, to believe. But we find that it's very, very critical to, to study it because it, it explains and tells us about how all the things that had to come to place for us to be redeemed, to, to be cleansed of our sins. Today we're talking among the 15 different names that are used to re represent this whole idea. We're talking about redemption, a very interesting word. In, in Galatians 3 and 13, it tells us Jesus has redeemed us from the curse of the law. God had given the people of Israel law, and unfortunately they had taken it and used it and many times used it in the wrong way and for the wrong purpose. And it got so complicated that very few people could even understand it and all the things that had to be done to enjoy the law. We also see in the book of, uh, of the, of the uh, Bible that there are three meanings for redemption. One is to pay a ransom price for something or someone. In other words, you're buying them back in some way. Look what it says here in Hebrews 9 and 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he, meaning Jesus Christ, entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Wow. Wow. Listen to some of the things that apply to this whole idea of redemption. For example, if you had a, a slave in the marketplace, there was a whole process that they had to go through it to, re to remove that slave from being a slave. Look what it says here in Galatians 3 and 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. In, in other words, Jesus Christ through Calvary and all that he went through for us, put himself in a situation where he took our place and redeemed us from our sins. Now, it's interesting to read in, others, in Romans 3, 24, and 1 Corinthians 1 and 20. It's explained in a, different, in a different way. For we know that the whole of creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Hallelujah. If you don't know it, one day we're going to have a new body. No more sickness, no, no, no body. And I believe that God is going to ask us how old we want to look, because there's no great or old in heaven, no birthday parties. So again, we see that there had to be a release. Under the Old Testament, the rules that were taking place we see that redemption had a different meaning in the sense of it was now applied to different things that were in the laws of the, uh, the Jewish people. If, it, if it's used in the regaining of a property, for example, to redeem something that was lost, a possession of property, which had been sold for debt, many times in the biblical times, people could not pay the taxes and they had to redeem, even make themselves slaves at times to pay the price. We also see that the story of Boaz in the story of Ruth, in Ruth 3 and 4, it would seem that he had fallen in love with this young lady, but she was actually a possession rather than free. And we read that this particular man, Boaz, was willing to take her in marriage, but he had to, to raise seeds of him, uh, uh, in other words, to have children with him, and that his name not be forgotten in Israel. But he had to go through the process of regeneration, redemption, right? Now listen to the requirements. These were things that they followed in the laws. In Leviticus 25 and 48, he must be a near kinsman. In other words, he had to be a, in the bloodline of this person who was to be redeemed. And he, this person, he or she, had to be able to for, for redemption. 
There might have been other reasons why this person was a slave or in whatever situation they were. And then he must be willing to redeem. And of course, all of these three things that we talked about were what Jesus Christ did. We can read it in Hebrews 2, 14 to 16. He did all of these things for us, redeemed ourselves because he made himself the man, the near kinsman of us. He was able to redeem, the Bible tells us in John 10 and 11, he was willing to redeem us. And his redemption of us was very costly in the sense that for as much as you know not that you were redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, which was the Old Testament, from your vain conversational lifestyle received by tradition from our fathers, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, as of the lamb without blemish and without spot, we are redeemed from our old life and from the th situations that we were in that were holding us back. Now take a look at uh, the next word that is used for salvation. Regeneration, right? You can be redeemed, but you need to be regenerated as well. Again, the Bible gives us a hint in Titus 3 and 5. Not by works of righteousness or goodness, which we have done, but by according to his mercy, the mercy of Jesus Christ, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Now, it's interesting to look at this word regeneration. It's an easy or interesting word. It says, it is that process whereby God, through a second birth, our, our birth in Christ, imparts to the believing sinner a new nature, a new nature. We are born again. That's what Jesus was talking about. In John 3 and 3, he brings this up again, and he says to Nicodemus, an old man, he says, I say unto thee, except thou be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God or she. And again, we know the story. It's a very interesting story because Nicodemus listens to what Jesus said, but he's thinking, I'm an old man. How am I going to go into my mother's womb and be born again? But Jesus wasn't talking about the physical part of redemption. He was talking about the spiritual part. And we know from reading the word of God that this man, in fact, was, re was redeemed and regenerated. Later on, we read about his activity in, in the story of Jesus. Look what it says here. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Again, there's no way to come to God or even to Christ without belief. And regeneration comes because of our acceptance by Christ and the forgiveness of our sins. We're going to stop here today and we're going to continue our Bible study because all of these words that we've been using are powerful words and they're all descri describing the same thing but in different ways. So we see that for us to be saved, we make it simple. We say, just give your heart to Jesus and you'll be saved. Your sins will be forgiven. But we forget there was a cost to this whole process where Jesus had to go to the cross and took upon himself our sins. And by the shedding of his blood, we were forgiven of our sins and made new, a new creation in Christ. Again, we'll continue next week. God bless you and have a blessed day.